Well, um, I, I was in Brazil, like I said, for the last couple of weeks. We kinda, could we have the picture of the, the first, uh, the team? There, well, that's the, one of the, there's the team. There were nine of us professors and the rest are students. We had about 60 people on the team uh, to, um, to go to Brazil and our mornings were spent in training and then our nights were spent in uh, the services. The next picture is this one of, one of the services that we were in. Um, yeah, it was, just, it was just amazing. And so this was not an evangelistic service, uh, re, you know, to, to reach the lost. It was a training and equipping uh, ministry so that the, we were training and equipping the students. And then we would go do the stuff in the services at night so they would there would be training and so there's the, it's mostly a congregation of it is a congregation of people who are hungry to do the stuff that jesus did and and so then we're also pressing in for healing we're pressing in for uh <clears throat> activation and impartation stirring up the gifts of god that are within the people and then activating them and pressing in for healing so the next slide um is some of the stats that we actually know, uh, we know that there were <clears throat> 1,793 physical healings. The sovereign healings are 782. Sovereign simply means people in the congregation who said, nobody laid hands on me, God just came on me and healed me. And so it was a total of <clears throat> 2,575 healings. <clears throat> this is that we know of, Okay. Um, and then emotional healing, 619, 22 salvations, 35 um, invitation. I think that's like reded or 26 rededications, 100, 1,222 blasted. What does that mean? That may be a new term for you. That means somebody that got hit so hard that they were just like on the floor lost in Jesus, okay? All right. Yeah, that, I mean really a, a real power encounter with the Lord. Uh, <coughs> We had 23 blind eyes open, 24 deaf ears open, 13 tumors removed, 7 people, lame people walking, and 44 people with metal in their body that was either dissolved, or say for example, I, I put this on Facebook, a woman who had knees, she couldn't bend, and God touched her and she was able to do deep knee, knee bends. So we don't know if that metal turns to rubber, or what kind of a miracle it is, all we know is that where they couldn't move before, then all of a sudden they could move. So that's some of the, uh, the statistics of our experience there, and it was amazing. Um, <clears throat> I, for the first time, got to pray for two women who, who, uh, whose blind eyes opened. That was my first time in my life. And uh, yeah, and it's like, you know, once you, once you see that happen, it's hard to go back behind that again, right? It, yeah, it's really too. So um, we started out our trip. Um, I want to share just a little bit and some of the things that God spoke to me uh, on the trip. But Father, first of all, I want to thank you that your presence is in the house today. And where you are your, where you're, you're present in worship, your power is present to heal. I thank you for ministering angels that are in this place. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that wave after wave of your glory has already been manifest today. I, and I've already prayed, God, that the eyes of our spiritual understanding would be opened, our physical and spiritual ears would be opened to be able to hear what the Spirit says to the church. Father, we give ourselves wholly and completely to you, asking you that we have the mind of Christ to be able to comprehend what the Spirit is saying and that our hearts will be open to receive everything that you have for us. And we want to give you the praise and the thanks that you be glorified in all things. God, challenge us. Challenge us today, God, to realize that there is more. Are you hungry for more? Would you just whisper and say, God, I want more. I want more. God, until my shadow raises the dead and the people, the lame jump up and walk because I walk past them, God, there is more. And I thank you for that, God. Thank you for putting that hunger in our heart, that divine invitation to press in because there's more that you have for us, Lord. And we want the more of God so that you can be glorified. And we give you praise for that, Father, in Jesus' name.
give you praise. You know, Jesus was mighty in word and deed. And if we don't, if all I do is tell you about the wonders of the Lord, all I do is tell you that the kingdom of God has come and that God is here to save, and I only talk to you about salvation, which is really where we lost it with the Reformation, when Martin Luther uh, began to uh, grasp hold of the revelation that the just shall live by faith. He took that word salvation, sozo, and he confined it to that Jesus saves us and cleans us up and gets us ready to go to heaven. And, th and that's really where, where Protestant theology got stuck, was right there in the Reformation. When in reality, that word saved, sozo, means saved, healed, delivered, protected, kept safe and sound, and made every whole, bit whole. Whenever Jesus died on the cross, he stretched out his arms, and he said, it is finished. He meant that it was finished. Everything that was lost through the fall was restored through the second man, Adam. Amen? And so we have the right to receive everything that Jesus died for. Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places has already been given to us. We have those blessings. All the promises of God are yes and amen. All the promises of God, no matter how great they are, they are there for us to lay hold of. And it's for us to press in and lay hold of those. To stop, to stop and not press in is to only take hold of half the gospel. Because Jesus paid the price. And he's, he preached the gospel and then he went out and he healed the sick, cast out demons, raised the dead and did all kinds of cool stuff, right? And then he sent his 12 disciples to go do the same thing. He says, go preach the gospel, heal, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. That's what we're supposed to do. He did the same thing with the 70. He said, now I want you, I'm spreading the circle out larger. I want you to go preach the gospel, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. In other words, bring the kingdom of God right here on earth and push back the powers of darkness and when we do that people there is a spiritual warfare that takes place the enemy is not going to give up his territory easy do you realize that he's going to push back against us but the thing is we have to be persistent in our pursuit of these things what happens for us is we kind of get a little glimpse of this and then we say, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going I'm to start praying for the sick. And we pray for three people. Nobody gets healed. And so we back off and go, well, I guess, I guess I'm, not, I'm not supposed to heal, pray for the sick or uh, maybe I'm not, as, I'm not anointed or, or whatever. But beloved, Jesus wants us to press in to get what he's already paid for. He paid for it. And he gave us, an, he said, I'm, uh, the parable of the persistent widow. She kept pushing in and pushing in, right? Until she got what she wanted. Uh, and we talked yesterday, Hannah, Hannah, who was barren, she pressed in until she got her baby boy, right? I mean, and look at Elisha, who's following after Elijah. Elijah says to him, you know, I'm going to go to Bethel. Stay here with me. And Elijah said, I'm not taking my eyes off you, Bubba. He says, okay, I'm going go to go to Jericho. Stay here. And Elisha said, I'm not, I'm not taking my eyes off you. And he kept going, and he said, I'm going to Jericho. Jo Jordan, he says, you stay here. He says, I've got my eyes fixed on you. I'm not leaving you. He pressed on, and he pressed on until the time came when Elijah was taken up. And whenever he was taken up, he caught the mantle. He said, I want a double portion of what's on you. The spirit that's on you, I want a double portion. And when he pursued it, and he pursued it, and he pursued it, and when that mantle dropped, he didn't take it, fold it up, and put it in a drawer and wait to see if anything happened. Come on. What did he do? He instantly took that mantle and went out and said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? Yeah. Quack! And he hit the water and it parted hither tither. He took what he had and instantly went out and began to use it. Yeah. Beloved, what we, do, what we do consistently in the church, God says, to, told Timothy, stir up the gifts of God that are within you, right? Stir them up. And we get them stirred up. And then we go out and we wait to see, wait to see if anything's going to happen. 
God wants us to stir up the gifts that are within, him, within us and then take what we have and begin to give it away. Yes. Begin to use what we've been given. It is good preaching, and it's right off out of my heart. I don't know. We have to be in the river of God. You see, the, the, the river of God, meaning it, it can either use the metaphor that it's out of the belly, that it flows, or we can say God flows through us. However you want direction, you want to flow, the river flows north or the river flows south. doesn't matter. The reality is we are in the river of God. And the more that we give away what we've got, the more we open up and God can give. We have to create a vacuum to suck in to the, the power of God. When we create a vacuum, a void inside of us, more will be given. Amen? So we have to give away what we've been given. And a lot of people, I think, in our Pentecostal chairs, it's, <clears throat> we've gotten a glimpse of, of this in here. We've kind of gone a little bit past Martin Luther's understanding of salvation and we've laid hold of the reality of the Holy Spirit coming up on us and us becoming one with Jesus and that we've got the power of God within us but we're still sitting and waiting for this thing, some miracle thing to happen so that we can be great mighty men and women of God. But the reality is the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, lives in us. And we have to take that, what we have, that little bit that we've got, and go out and use it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I came back with, a, with junk in my chest. About half of our team got sick. And you can go, well, where's all your faith? For, for Let me tell you, we were in a war. That's, a, that's spiritual battle. And our physical body was the weak link. And it's a reminder to me how desperately when we go out, when I go out, I need your prayer covering. And I thank you so much that you covered me I'm just going to ask you for, would you give me just a little bit more? Because we, the, the enemy, yeah, the enemy does not go, oh, wow, there's those wonderful people that came to open blind eyes and, and set captives free. Let's just back out of the way and let them know we're, we are marching like an army into the devil's territory. I mean, I, the Sunday morning that I preached, which was last Sunday morning, I woke up and I had this junk. I had bowels that were water. I am so sick. I mean, I'm serious. I'm sick and they're going to drive me for I, And I'd only gotten like three or four hours the night before because we got in like one o'clock. I had to get up for the six o'clock prayer watch. And I was so weak and so tired. And I'm like, God, this is, you know, I didn't have time to prepare a message. And here I am going out to preach in this church. And I'm, st and I'm, I'm there and I'm just worshiping the Lord. The first note that comes, I'm beginning to just dance before the Lord. And my little T.A. Max is there with me. And he comes over and he's just like stunned. And he goes, he goes, Dr. Dawson, angels are dancing with you. Amen. Angels are dancing with you. And we underestimate the angels that are ministering with us. Amen. But I ministered powerfully that morning, and I saw several people that were literally delivered from demonic oppression. It was so powerful. It was so powerful. But I feel like we are the army going in, and your prayers are like the Air Force. Your prayers are like the Air Force fighting with us in the spiritual atmosphere. So I want to encourage you. Thank you all for praying for me. And I want to encourage you that when I leave again in two weeks to go to the, the UK, and I'll share that with you next week, to, to, to London, I covet your prayers so that I don't come back sick. Amen. 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 Well, the first night that we were there, we had uh, impartation service in 
Impartation simply means, you know, like Moses laid his hands on, and, on Joshua and he imparted a portion of his, what he had on him into Joshua. And it's, all, and it's the same way with the, the 72 elders where what was on Moses, God took and put on. And so there is this aspect of divine impartation and the activation or stirring up the gifts of God that are within you. And so, we, the, so they prayed for the professors first that first night. And I'm laying on the floor in a ball and I'm just sobbing. And I'm praying in the spirit and I hear my spirit language turn into knock, 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 knock. And I'm just desperate, just crying out. I can hear my spirit crying out for more. Knock, knock, knock. I feel like I'm I'm on he at heaven's doors knocking. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say to me, um, Connie, how do you get in a locked door? And I, all of a sudden, I remember the week before last, do you remember I talked about the keys? And I said, well, Papa, you take the keys. A key opens a, a locked door. And he reminded me that I have the key. And all we have to do, church, is take the keys that we have been given and unlock those doors. Remember, I shared with you two weeks ago. I hope I'm, I'm going to run out of time. I got more time. Yep. Okay. That whenever Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, he opened the door of death to all of humanity, right? And he gave the keys. I'm not saying that you're the devil, but he gave, <laughs> he gave the keys to the evil one, right? So death was on all of humanity up until the cross. And then Jesus took our death into himself, putting on humanity. He went to the cross and he took our death. And then he went into the grave. And he, while he was in the grave, it says that he went to the lower parts of hell where they were having a grand party because they thought they had crucified the Lord of glory. But he went in, and what did he do? He took the keys back. And what did he do with the keys? He gave them to the church. That's right. He gave them to you and I to be able to take the keys and to lock and unlock. So the treasures of the kingdom, it says in Ephesians, that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And it's up to us to take the keys and unlock those things. And as I'm laying there on the floor, I'm starting to think, you know what? I'm going to unlock some treasures here. I'm going to unlock that door that says um, body parts. Doesn't it say that John 14, 14, whatever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. Now, that's a word from God, right? And so it's a matter of us taking him at his word. It says in Ephesians chapter 3 that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. How much can you imagine? And we have to be like a little children to inherit the kingdom of God. No one will see the kingdom of God unless they come like a little child. So if you read that verse like a little child rather than a grown-up Pentecostal, who, you've, who you don't think God can, will do that anymore because you've tried, 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 and you haven't pressed in long enough or hard enough to be, and be persistent enough to break through. And, you're still, and so you're back up like a lot of people. I'm not throwing stones. I'm one. They back up and go, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to be disappointed anymore, so I'm not going to press on. But you know what? If we get back to that position where we're like a little child and we read that verse, whatever I ask in, the, in, the, in his name, he will do it for me exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. And we know that we have the keys. Why not us just be like a little child and take that key and let's unlock some of those miracles. And as I'm thinking through that, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say miracles, 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 miracles. And I, that all of a sudden, it's like I'm going to open a door. Miracles. And I see these sparks that begin to fly that are miracles that are being released. Beloved, I want to walk in that level. 
Amen? And so this means that we don't just have a great glorious service one day and, and just wonder where are all the miracles. It means we have to be like that persistent widow. We have to be like blind Bartimaeus who would not be shushed. Amen. We have to push and we have to push realizing that we are in a spiritual battle. And we have to push on. We have to push in. We have to push through. Because God has already paid for these things. It's not a matter of getting these things from God. It's a matter that they're already in the warehouse and the enemy is trying to keep us from them. Amen? Right. Wes, I'm going to believe for new lungs for you. Yeah. New body parts, new lungs, yeah. new hearts. There's people that are receiving new hearts and new lungs and new pancreas and new livers. Yeah. And if that God will do it for them, he'll do it for us. New kidneys. Amen. God gave me a little song while I was there. Gosh, I can't even remember now. Oh, help me, Jesus. While I was laying on the floor and I came at, here it is. Forgive me, R.C. Act on the word that you've been given. Act on the word that you've been given. Act on the word that you've been given. And he will follow through. He will follow through. Think about that. Act on the word that you've been given. Act on the word that you've been given. Act on the word that you've been given. And he will follow through, and he will follow through. What does that mean? To me, that just simply means this Bible is full of good stuff that God has promised to us. And if he did it in anybody's life, in this book, it's there for my asking. It's there for my taking. And so it gets back to being a little child. A little child. He also asked me while I was on that floor, and, I, and remember, I was under activation and impartation. That was the, that's where I am, laying on the floor just after activation and impartation. And he says to me, what's the first thing you do when you get a credit card in the mail? Not go out and charge. What's the first thing you do? What's the... Activate it. You activate that credit card. And beloved, whenever a credit card has been activated, you can go charge what you want, right? But the thing about these credit cards is there's a limit. But God has given activated a card for us. He said, ask anything in my name. Amen. That's a card without limits. Yeah. How big are you willing to believe for? How big are you willing to believe for? What do you think about that? I'm, I'm wanting to get to that place where I grow up to be like a child. But I'm really pressing in with persistent faith and saying, Daddy, Jeannie Crocker needs a healing. Yep. She needs a healing. And I'm declaring it in her body yeah. right now in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Strength coming back into her body, putting weight back on. Strength coming back yeah. into her body in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Her bowels being healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The power of God coming up on her. Thank you, Lamb of God, for your work in her body. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to see that. I believe if we believe it, if, we, if, if, if God has put it in our hearts to start thinking along those lines, it's because he's drawing us into that. 
I really believe that that's where we are headed as a church, as a people. As a kingdom, God wants to advance the kingdom of God through us, and he's drawing us. Would you, would you put aside that, that, that cognitive dissidence where we, where we have this tilt, and would you step into the mind of Christ, and would you begin to believe? Would you begin to believe? 